We are joined by former Bills tight end coach Charlie Coiner. Uh, 2006 to 2009, he's got an amazing uh, football history uh, beyond that. And he is currently, he's the founder of the First Down Technologies uh, playbook uh, platform. And we definitely want to talk with that about that with him. But uh, Charlie, thanks for joining us. And, and I haven't asked you yet, where are you calling in from? Good to be here, Don. I'm, I'm actually a little bit, about 40 miles north of Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm, I'm looking at a very beautiful lake called Norris Lake, uh, right over top of my screen right here. So Excellent. I saw Tennessee was a place that uh, you, you coached also. This is yep. the first. This is the first time I've met and talked to Charlie. Charlie just sounds like football. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it oozes out of him. Charlie, you just sound like football. Like if yeah. I if I had to design, you know, I'd be working at the team and, and meeting a bunch of the coaches and, and stuff over the years, like he just sounds like he just sounds like football. It's the first thing that I'm caught glad, my. I'm glad you say that, Josh, because the the girls in our office they they don't let me do any of our. Uh, any of our videos on Twitter because of the way I twang. So at least somebody likes it. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if you, if you've been around it, you know that Charlie, Charlie would be a, a great voice for his own company. So, you know, maybe take us back to, to your own football journey. Uh, you know, I, obviously his coaching career starting at Appalachian state, but did you play, uh, you know, is that, is that how you got into coaching was, was through I, playing? I did not. I, I played, um, uh, high school, uh, baseball and football. And when I went to college, um, you know, one of those guys that thought he was better at a sport than he was talking about baseball. And so I focused on baseball at Catawba College. And, you know, I, when I got through my four years, uh, and I, it turned out I wasn't a very good baseball player either. But uh, when I got finished with college, I went to Appalachian State and sort of looked around. And I, I knew I wanted to be a coach, but I, I did, didn't see myself just standing on third base giving signals. Uh, so. Uh, I walked into Mac Brown's office when I was at Appalachian State the one year he was there, uh, 83, and asked him if I could coach. And, you know, back in those days, you could do that kind of thing easier. And he explained that there would be no pay. And, I, you know, the pay was kind of what I would learn. And so it's the old Bill Belichick system, I guess. But uh, that's where it started. And um, I thought I would be a high school coach. And it um, would have been perfectly fine if that's the way it would have worked out. But I got on the uh, I got on the merry-go-round. Didn't get off for thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> merry-go-round it is. I mean, there are a lot of stops too. Uh, you know, Appalachian State. Uh, obviously, when you think of them, you think of that famous upset. Yeah, uh, in Boone, the Boone North Carolina. After you, right? We drove. I just drove past there a couple of weeks ago. We drove down to Florida, the Universal, for a week, and that it's amazing that they've built a program in in that part of the country like, uh, no Boo, uh, Appalachian State, oh, Appalachian in, State. in Boone right. North yeah, Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. pretty amazing. So so Charlie like. Take us through what is it like to be uh, a college, you know, assistant football coach? I think a lot of people don't understand the grind and the journey and the stops and, you know, having a family <laughs> when you're moving every other year. So those years when you were at Austin P, Vanderbilt, Texas Southern, Louisville, Chattanooga, LSU, what, what was that like? And what was the ultimate goal? Well, once again, once you get started with it, you know, you, you develop your own personality with it. You I think everybody's eat up with it to a certain, to a different degree. I was eat up with it. I mean, you're looking at a guy that's never been married, doesn't have a family. And uh, some of that's probably, I may not be the best guy to live with or that kind of thing. But I was very focused on, you know, I, I would leave if I got a job opportunity that was better. And, and, and sometimes they would ask me to leave, ask us to leave as a staff. So, you know, the, the grind part of it, is a little bit different in college football, a lot different in college football, I think, these days. But, you know, the recruiting was part of it. Um, and you, as a young coach, I, I embraced it. I loved it. You know, I, once again, being the single guy, as the guy they'd throw on a plane to go to California, um, you know, and and the thing that they talk about now, and they did back then, you literally had about six, maybe six weekends out of a year that you weren't doing something. I think it's even worse now. But um, I loved it. You know, I, I, I just I can I can honestly say that the coaching part of it, I never it never got old with me. I, it was it, it got in my it got in my blood early and I enjoyed teaching, enjoyed having, you know, when I first had my own unit, I, I was the happiest guy on the planet. Um, and the recruiting at the beginning was was exciting travel. You know, I'm from a small town in Virginia. Would have never gotten to do any of those things had it not been for college football um and so that part was great grew that grew old toward the end um particularly when i went back to tennessee and north carolina 
uh, after being in the NFL, I, you know, I, I had gotten spoiled a little bit about just football, you know, focus on football. And uh, that when I went back, I wasn't really fired that fired up about recruiting. I didn't have to do it at, uh, at North Carolina, Tennessee either. So uh, hope that answers the question. So. Yeah, no, it's a good answer. You had some big time programs too at Louisville, LSU. Uh, you're at Texas Southern in 2000, and then you break into the NFL with the Chicago Bears, 2001. How did that uh, come about? Well, it, yeah, I was thinking about that. I, I tweeted about it last night, actually. Um, mm-hmm. And you're you're going to know somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know anybody. I, I I don't know a single person that gets in the NFL that didn't know somebody to help them do that. So my deal was, and this is how it works out. When I was at Vanderbilt. Jerry DiNardo was the head coach and I was in charge of hiring GAs. And so he told me, he said, you're in charge of hiring GAs um, because if they're not good, you're going to do their work for them. So (laughs) (laughs) good. Uh, And John Shoup uh, was one of the people that uh, we hired and John came in and did a good job for us. I took off the Texas Southern. John ends up uh, being on the inaugural staff at the Carolina Panthers because George Katavlis, who also is, uh, yes. You know, former Buffalo Bills coach got him over there through a, a coach. So it, 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 somebody knew somebody knew somebody, right? So John gets the Panthers, does well, shows up over to Bears, um, becomes the coordinator, and yeah, I make a, an incredible leap from. And not that Texas Southern was a bad place at all. I enjoyed my two stays there actually, but uh, made that leap to the Chicago Bears in 2001 as a quality control coach and. You know, all the papers were saying we were going to be fired. And, you know, I thought, well, one year in the NFL is better than none. And so um, we went 13-3 and three and uh, went to the playoffs and got a bye. So well, Dick uh, Duron, right? Dick Duron. Coach Duron. Yep. Was, that's where I met Coach Duron, and um, that's one of the one of the best things that happened from it. Yeah, no, that's great. And you mentioned George Katavlos. I instantly, you're having a flashback, the best dressed co- coach I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> he just every day you look. Are you going? Are you going uh, out somewhere? You know, he just he just dressed like he was. Nice. Yeah, yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah. He and he and I have different wardrobes. You're right. <laughs> no, his was more the outlier. Yeah. But uh, so so you're there with Coach Duran, and uh, you have that you know 13 and three. Uh, but then, as you said, uh, with with the nature of the NFL, um, you're let go there. But you end up. I'm proud to say, looking at your uh, resume, that uh, the Bills were the longest consecutive stint that that you had uh, well, for four years it's pretty good well not, it's, it's kind of true and kind of not because what happened in chicago is after three years we got let go mm-hmm. uh jerry angelo had taken a liking to me for some reason the general manager and uh i which is true i, I moved completely out of the building and was looking around for any other quality control i mean i, I talked to green bay i talked to a few other people and uh, you know nobody would move on it yet and it it had gotten to january and finally jerry angelo called me and he said would you consider being an assistant special teams coach and i said well i would consider doing whatever you know keeps me in the nfl right now i've only been in it one year he said well Hmm. he he told me i guess he said dress like george katavla said put on a tie and a coat come up here (laughs) help lovey and uh i don't think lovey even knew i was coming to be honest but uh you know I think Jerry talked Lovey into it, and I ended up working with Dave Tobe uh, as the assistant special teams coach for Chicago for two years for Lovey. Um, great experience. Lovey was tremendous to work for, and, and Dave Tobe is, in my opinion, you know, the best special teams coach. He's at Kansas City now. He's got several. Um, well, you know, well, he was at Chicago a little bit everywhere. But anyway, um, it was it was a great experience. But when Coach Duran got the job at Buffalo. I wanted to get back on the offensive side of the ball if I could. And so um, when he called about that with the tight ends, I was, you know, I was packed up, ready to go. So yeah. when you get a job, you know, people listening to this and you've worked special teams, special teams quality control, what did, did you have confidence when you were going to become the tight ends coach? Uh, is it something that you had to learn? Did you have to learn how to coach tight ends? Like, did you feel comfortable from day one being the tight ends coach when you, you, you hadn't before? I had it in my background in college. Um, looking back on it, I don't know that that was very much, you know, that prepares you very much for the NFL. Um, but, yeah, w- walking into Buffalo and, um, you know, with Jim McNally and Larry Zerline being there, um, <laughs> I mean, what, whatever I didn't know, they taught me pretty quickly and got me straight. 
But I think a lot of that is, you know, if you if you understand football, you understand technique. You know, blocking is a technique. Uh, now it might be a little bit different for a tight end than it is a guard. Uh, route running is a technique. It might be a little bit different if you're the number one, number two receiver or end of line receiver. But if you understand, you know, the techniques, uh, you know, of, you know, flat back, hands inside, feet moving, all, all of those type of things, you're, you know, you're going to be fine. So, yeah, I, I, and I never doubted my work ethic. Once again, I, you know, I was the guy that was going to, if I didn't know, I was going to find out I was going to work hard. You're a football guy, as we said when we right. opened. I don't know if we were recording yet, but yeah, you yeah. are the epitome of a football guy. So um, <clears throat> one of the one of the uh, maybe differences um, between college and the NFL is I, I recall uh, being in a meeting um, with kind of the front office, but all the coaches, and there was a time, <clears throat> maybe it was February, where all the uh, position coaches were brought in. There was a big board, and it said, you know, here's the salary cap. Uh, here's our roster. I remember. What, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And uh, every position coach had a chance to kind of make an appeal for how their positions could be improved through free agency. And uh, I do recall, I think one of the years you were there, we we were able to sign Robert Royal, who was a big uh, signing, like early first day free agent. Do you you say you recall that? And and what do you remember about that? Well, I I remember that specific meeting because that you know. Josh, you ask about learning and inexperience. Um, I was really green about how all that stuff worked when I got in the NFL. I remember, and I'll, I'll back. I'll get back to what you're asking about, Don, Don. But I remember being at the Chicago Bears my first year, and I got in. I had my head down, just working quality control, and you know, sleeping on the floor at nights. We let go of our, uh, you know, our whole scouting department. I didn't understand what had happened. I, I didn't mm -hmm. understand really who they were. I, I, I swear, I didn't. And then, you know, but when I got and I learned over the years, you know, you start going to meetings and scouting meetings and you understand how it works. And you understand that sometimes there's some back and forth. Sometimes it's bad, you know, where they don't get along at all. Um, but the meetings there, you know, when you've got your own, I never really had, you know, I worked with quarterbacks when I was there and special teams, but I never really had my own group until I got to Buffalo. And so it was always interesting to me how people approach that. Uh, I saw some coaches actually approach those meetings from a standpoint of lobbying to get the best player in there for their position, because if they got the best player in there for their position, then that was going to bring uh, maybe a job security, b um, you know a little bit of uh, focus on them where they can grow as a coach and maybe get a coordinator's job and that type of thing. I always looked at it. Um, I always looked at tried to look at the scheme of what we were doing, and. You know, and that, that's hard uh, with the tight, you know, it may still be, you know, Rob Boris probably goes through some of the same things. Um, but, you know, you get in those meetings and it's not only who you're going to go get. Sometimes you have those meetings and you haven't talked on offense about what you're going to do. Hmm. I'm like, okay, yeah, we'd love to go get uh, Gronkowski or, you know, whoever the uh, Gates or whoever. But are we sure? Are we, do we even know if we're going to have an end of the line blocker? Or are we going to, is he going to flex out? Is he going to move around? Is he going to be a hybrid? What's he going to be? And so uh, when I got in those meetings, I always tried to keep the big picture in, in you know, focus first and go to the coordinator and go, like, hey, now, what, what, are we, what are we talking about here? And, I, and I'll say this, the, the one thing that I always felt like um, a position coach could bring to value for an organization was if – if you did have to go out and you uh, and you want to go out and get a Marshawn Lynch, if you had to go out and get um, a star player in free agency, you know it might not be your position. If if you're a really good position coach, if you can take um, an, an intermediate level player and make them good, as opposed to making a good player great or a great player greater, you know if you can do that, you 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 bring value to the organization by mm -hmm. helping that organization stay inside the salary cap. Yeah. So those are the things I always remember about when I was in those meetings of trying to keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to Robert, I knew Robert from LSU. I'd already been with him at LSU. And mm, you know, by the time we got Robert, he wasn't, he wasn't long in the tooth, but he was, he was getting there a little bit, meaning he had some experience. I, I knew Robert was a worker. I knew Robert was smart and I watched Robert on, uh, you know, tape, you know, obviously, you know, when he was, became a free agent and uh, I was excited to have Robert there. I also knew what kind of leader he would be. 
for the uh, building. That had to carry some weight, your, your personal history with him and knowing some of those intangibles. It does. It does. And, and, and those are the things that that should. I mean, personal personal relationships are important. I mean, in a building, in a, in a meeting room. I mean, you look at what's going on right now with, uh, you know, Nate Hackett, who was with us at and mm-hmm. Bill Rogers. I mean, that, that kind of stuff's important because what Nate's personality might not have fit very well out in Denver. I don't know what happened out there. But, you know, obviously Rogers likes it. And if Rogers likes it, that's a good thing. I got, I got, I got two questions for you here, Charlie. First of all, being like the tight ends coach, it's a small room, you know, three, four or five guys. It's a different coaching, um, you know, group of three to then coaching like the special teams or the O-line or a larger position group. Like, did you enjoy coaching? Because, you know, in a meeting room when there's only three guys in there and you, uh, it gets a little personal and, and, you know, it's a little, (laughs) it's it's every day with those same guys. Did you enjoy like the smaller position groups or did you like, you know, a a little bit bigger? How'd you feel? I I loved it. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a uniqueness about an offensive line room too with, you know, now the NFL never gets, it never gets to be 13 and 15. You know, in the NFL, even your offensive line room is going to be seven, eight, nine, ten, depending on how many you got on the practice squad or whatever. But uh, our meeting room at Buffalo, um, we went through a lot when I was at, in Buffalo. I mean, we had, you know, we had Kevin Everett get hurt. And, um, you know, there was always – it was always good to have, like, Robert was there. He was the, the old vet, and he would, um, you know – chip in, help out with the young ones. I mean, I could be, you know, I didn't have to do that with uh, Schumann very much, but, you know, we, we would have a, a young kid in and, you know, he would be screwing up. And I'd just look at Robert, like, Robert, get him straight before I have to. <laughs> and Robert would take him, put his arm around him and coach him up. And in the meetings, Robert would uh, not only uh, reinforce what I was talking about, Robert would bring ideas to the table. And I think, you know, that's new to a kid coming out of college. They have, you know, when the coach is actually listening to Robert's like, why are we not, why are we not running this? Or why don't we block it this way? Which is the same thing going on right now with Rodgers and you're know, talking about it and any veteran quarterback is going to do that. But um, I loved it. Um, the, it, it, it gets, I don't know what it would have been like in another position group, but you know, when, when Kevin did get hurt, um, we were faced with a, a huge void. We had, I'd invested a lot of time. Kevin had invested a lot of time. The Bills had invested a lot of time in Kevin. They told me that, you know, this was Kevin's year. He had to make or break it. And and he had come so far, so far, uh, which was one other thing that was heartbreaking about it. Um, which we're all glad that he you know, in, ended up healthy. But, um, you know, we, we bought in Michael Gaines, who was on the street. And uh, I didn't even go to the meetings for, the, for three weeks, our, our office meetings, because I had to get him ready to go because – our offense was heavily reliant on a tight end. And we uh, had Robert and Schumann, but if one of those had gone down, um, you know, we, we would have been in – our whole offense would have had to change. So uh, that was interesting because, you know, you got a guy that's off the street, really doesn't even understand your system. Schumann, uh, Derek's extremely smart. Uh, Robert's smart, and they were they were picking it up. Now, I was in our meetings, our tight end meetings. I would, did not go to the – staff meetings and game planning because that that wasn't as important as making sure we had you know three tight ends that could go on game day interesting i got two i I lied i have two more (laughs) second question i think people would want to hear can you break down what a tuesday during the season was like for you the hours what you did um people don't understand the grind of a nfl tuesday for an assistant coach and and that's typically the player's day off yeah yeah, that's why right. I picked Tuesday because that's that's the yeah, big yeah, game yeah. plan. Yeah, right. Right, and and you know, organizations will do it a little bit differently about how you know when the um, when the um, scouting departments will come in and present you with your opponent and the breakdown of you know they're going to grade each person and that type of thing. But but yeah, you know your your typical week in the NFL. It's it, it, I actually heard I only watched the first little bit of the game last night, but I heard Collinsworth say. The thing is different about that game last night is they were running, they were running uh, just base plays everywhere on the field, on third and short base play, on red zone sh- base play. That's not the way the NFL has played. So, on a Tuesday, essentially, you know, you've you've come in on Monday and you've you put the opponent to bed, you know, and you're you're staying up there pretty late on Monday night. Um, but 
you know, a lot of coaches will run you out of there, um, you know, Monday around nine or 10 o'clock at night or something like that. Um, but on Tuesday you come in and everybody is going to, you'll know, have your staff meeting. You'll talk about your base runs and you'll talk about, you know, you know who you're playing, what front it is. The scouting department may come in, give you the, the breakdown on that. And then depending on how you do it, everybody will break up, actually look at their section. Uh, you may be in charge of uh, base runs, meaning uh, first and 10, you know, second and uh, four to five, that type of thing. Don may be in charge of um, red zone. He may go off that way. Josh, you may be in charge of third down. Another guy might be in charge of short yardage and goal line. You know, everybody kind of goes off and looks at video overall, but they also start looking at their specific uh, thing that they've got. And then as Tuesday goes on, uh, what you're typically going to do is you're going to start with your base runs. Um, and so you'll come in, you'll look at the front, what runs look good, which ones do you have to check out of. Uh, you know, you're, 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 there may be some runs that you might have just run yesterday that, you know, you are got 200 yards on it, but no, you, it's not. It's a different front. So you go through all of that. Uh, you talk a lot about protections on um, in the NFL on Tuesday. Your offensive line coach is heavily – involved with that but but everybody is because you got it it's not the offensive line is not the only part of protection your quarterback's got to understand the hots the sights so do your you know the receivers tight ends and all that type of thing so you go through that and then as you get um the day progresses now you you are going to start getting into your specifics a little bit are you going to try to get some of your third down stuff done on that day or short yardage and goal line and you'll do it that day everybody does it a little bit different but that's that's the way. Tuesday is an all-day sucker. I mean, you leave out of there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I spent many Tuesdays staying, uh, staying in the building uh, okay. there. Uh, you know, before you were there. So, one last one. I think people would be interested in. What did you do specifically on game day when you were in Buffalo? Game day, I was on the sideline, which was unusual for me. A lot of times, I was I was up top, but I was in charge of just essentially charting our run game, uh, looking at. Uh, what was working, what was not, communicating with either Nate Hackett up top or Alex Van Pelt up top and uh, relaying that down to the – and helping either McNally or Sean Kugler with the offensive line and the blocking scheme, that type of thing. So um, – Did you prefer to be up top? I did. I, I really did. Yeah. I, I felt like I'm, – I'm one of the guys that feels like um, – I feel, I feel like – that unless you're calling plays and unless you're um, you know involved in decision making like the head coach is a lot of the hay is in the barn on game day. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I am, I, I am on, you know, even Robert or, you know, there's not a play going to go by in practice where you're not, I'm co you got coach, 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 what they pay you to do coach. But when it gets to game day, you got to get out of their hair. And so a lot of times, um, you know, what, what I did at the bills, you know, it was about adjustments. It was hearing what they told us was going on making the adjustment based on what they saw i mean i'm five foot eight standing on the sideline there's some things i can't see particularly on the other side so um i always embraced and loved being up top uh, i'm not sure exactly why i wasn't in buffalo i can't remember but i was up top uh with the bears uh when i was there and, and enjoyed it because i you know you're you're charting you're keeping up and and it's it's a mental game on uh it's a mental game to me when the game is going on the sideline really is a terrible place to watch a game for short guys <laughs> like you and I. Like it's terrible. <laughs> terrible place to watch a game. A good good place to break your leg if you're not paying attention. Yeah, uh, amen to that. I got I got I got a, a, a helmet in the shin, oh. uh, like my third game, and I I was after that I was always ready and prepared. Those helmets yeah, let, to the let, shin let, were let nasty. That happen when it's about two degrees in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. keep your head in the <laughs> swivel. That's for sure. Uh, Charlie, going back a little bit, Josh was mentioning, you know, the small tight end room. You mentioned Kevin Everett. I had a chance to talk with Kevin Everett. A couple of years ago, I actually wrote a book about that 2006 uh, snowstorm that, uh, hey, welcome to Buffalo. That was your first year. I'll have to yeah. send you a copy. But I did a Zoom call with with Kevin and the, the co-author that I was with. We decided we weren't going to ask him about um, the uh, his injury unless he brought it up. Then we would talk about it. But we just wanted to try to give him a chance to talk about his experience in Buffalo and, and, and the football. And he had mentioned, too, that. He was so excited about 2007 because in 05 he sprained or tore his ACL, missed the season. Six, you taught him some things that had him ready for 07. He thought 
and he was told by you and others he was going to be a really big part of the offense that year. He was. And, no, he was told uh, it. Well, it was true. Yeah, yeah, he felt it, and and uh, it was just devastating at so many levels. So, you know, the, it seemed the whole world watched Demar Hamlin. Uh, what happened to him that night? Uh, so I have to imagine this was a similar experience for you uh, when it happened to Kevin, and then he's not there in the meeting room the next day or on Tuesday. What was that like for you? It, it was the the uh, logistics of it was interesting. Uh, I lived on uh, Delaware Street. I lived one mile from the hospital, and so um, when I wasn't sleeping at the office, you know, I would I would drive into Orchard Park every day. So when Kevin got hurt. Um, and, and I actually did stay at the office quite a bit. I started staying at home uh, during the weekend. So I would go by, I, I would get up really early. And I could go to the hospital and they'd let me sneak in the back and I could see Kevin uh, every morning, almost every morning, not every morning. I can't remember now, but I know that was the routine. And um, huh. it was, I mean, it was gut wrenching to be honest. Like, cause I always said, that that would be prior to that. I always said that would be the worst thing that ever happened to you as a coach. Um, and, um, and it happened and I, I, I don't want to get too much in everything, but, I, but as, as the time went on, I'd go in and, you know, Kevin's Kevin, Kevin's a little bit of a, you know, he's a, he's a little bit of a prankster too, but I, I, I stayed with him one time because his mom and his uh, girlfriend now wife had been with him and uh, they went and saw movies. So I set up there with him and, and cut up with him and I don't like we were up there one night let's put it this way and you know I'm sitting there talking to him and he said I got something I want to show you and I think it was when I was um, staying up there uh, hanging out with him when they were at the movie and I said what's that and he he picked his leg up in the bed and curled about his knee up and punched it <laughs> oh I, wow. I thought I was gonna. I, I I thought I was gonna fall out. I'm like, like, oh. like. I said something like, "Dude, they know you can do that, right?" He's like, <laughs> like, I think he said something like, "Wait, you think you'd be the first one I'd show?" Or <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> they said you can't tell anybody. I was like, no, I didn't. And like, but, but shortly thereafter, it, it started coming out that he he was regaining his uh, movement. And uh, but yeah, it's this hard. I mean, because you're doing you're doing that. And then you're going in and, 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 you know, and, and bless Michael Gaines is hard. I mean, he didn't get the best mood, you know, best coach mood when I'm out there in the all day trying to get him caught up. And, uh, yeah. and Michael Gaines did a remarkable job. I mean, he ended up signing a $10 million contract with Detroit, I think the next year, he was but uh, yeah. he did a really good job with us that year. But yeah, that, that's something no coach ever wants to go through. And when I, when I watched, I was, I don't watch every bills game, but I was watching that one. And, uh, that um, I just kind of went to bed and I don't know, wasn't a good feeling, but I'm glad yeah. it worked out well for him oh, too. Good story. Absolutely. So Don was talking about uh, af your, you know, after football career and you, uh, you founded a company. Uh, you'll laugh back in 2000, uh, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, we were using Playmaker Pro, which was just an <laughs> awful, awful program. Uh, I I hated it, and I I'm very thankful that you <laughs> helped develop a, a new you know way to design draw plays. I see that you know your company uh, is the official like playbook for USA football, uh, etc. My boys are 10 years old, and they're both playing flag. And w my, the coaching staff could have certainly used uh, <laughs> your program this year. It was not the best coach team in the world, but maybe you can just talk to us on on how you got into that after you know your coaching days were over, and then you know what it looks like today. Sure. When, when, you know, when we got let go in 2009, uh, I had a year left on my contract and, and I was looking for a job, but um, wasn't having a whole lot of luck with it. But trying to stay in the NFL, I, I sort of made my mind up there. So I moved to Austin, Texas um, and was just going to hang out. First time, you know, once again, totally different. I'd never really done that being the guy I was. But um, the one thing I was going to try to get accomplished that year was I was going to try to get, you know, I had had 17 boxes of playbooks that every time I made those moves y'all been talking about, that was probably the biggest thing the mover had to take, you know, a single guy. I didn't have a whole lot of furniture or clothes or anything, but my goal was to get everything on a computer at that time. This was 2010. And uh, just so that, you know, if I had a meeting and the office coordinator said, Hey, you know, what, what did y'all do at LSU here? What'd y'all do at the bears here? I could easily get to it um, as opposed to going home and digging through it. And by the time you find it, it's too late. 
so that started and then a, a good friend of mine looked at it in 2010 um, he lived in the apartment com the apartment complex i did and said you've got an app there so i didn't even know what an app was in 2000 <laughs> but uh, long story short we did end up cre uh, i created an app um it was purely on the passing game and uh it, it had some success but it didn't take very long to understand that um what was really needed out there with the coaching community and i say coaching community everybody from pop warner nfl flag up through um you know college football and even the nfl was all branches of, of football offense defense special teams uh flag football you know that there was a need for a, a, a good play drawing tool because i too used playmaker pro and got into the world of visio which is a you know an engineering tool that 95 percent of it is designed for something other than drawing football plays mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the idea at some point in 2015 we pivoted and said okay we, we're going to create a drawing tool that is specifically for football and the um the difference and it's still different to this day it does not exist on this planet right now if anybody hears this and wants to argue they i'll give them my phone number yeah. we provide coaches at all levels uh football plays there's over thirty-five thousand plays in first down playbook talking about flag talking about offense defense special teams every time we draw a run play up we draw it up uh we draw the power up against five different defenses a four three over four three under three four three four bear and so now when a when a user comes in there they don't just get a play they get a play that's drawn up you know comprehensively against pretty much all you're going to see and so we had that for a while but we finally edited it finally added the ability to edit the plays now the user or the customer or the coach can go in find what they want quickly on our website and then they tap an edit button when they tap that edit button that play we we draw that play off of our canvas put it on their canvas so to speak and now it's their play they can edit it any way they want to they can change the blocking scheme slightly maybe put the players names on there instead of x z y uh change the name of the play when they save it now it saves into their playbook area and now from there they can create their own playbooks uh they play practice cards they can create the old two four six uh we call them play grids uh with coaching points they can do their practice schedules there now they can do their scripts there now they can do their wristband sheets there now um we now have the integration of you can pair video uh, we just launched an app for the players uh two weeks ago and scouting reports will be out uh, here uh coming up in i think probably the third week of august man that almost got me excited to go back on a tuesday and, uh, <laughs> and, and draw some plays man that's yeah you know, it's kind of amazing if you think about it yeah. that up until you did this there was no you know like football specific software it's pretty unbelievable if you think about it right and there, and there have been some people that come in and, and are trying to copy but the, but what they what they what they will not and cannot do unless they want to depend on ai because we're that far ahead of them now is you know, there are a lot of tech you know technology is big and i don't deny technology because that makes our life a lot easier than it was 10 years ago 20 years ago but there's a lot of technology out there that has forgotten the game um, they just give you the technology and if you go inside of their building you're going to look high and low and probably not see a football person in that building and so what we have tried hard to do starting with me all right i don't like to use that word very much but it did start with me and has grown with coaches um in our building everything you know come, but we don't forget the football part of it and now we're big enough to where we have our customers who are coaches and we lean heavily on them with what they need and we we listen and that's been um that's been a big deal for us you know we people it's a big saying out there everybody likes to use it you know four coaches by coaches or by coaches four coaches that's really what we do and I'll, I'll just quit jabbering here real quick and just to make a point about that is we're um entirely self-funded uh, right. we looked for outside funding initially uh didn't get it and i wouldn't take it now if it if it you know knocked on my door you're beholden so, man right that is one of the things that allows us to stay true to coaches i don't have to worry about somebody that's you know a multi-millionaire walking in and saying this is the way it needs to be done 
and they've never coached a ball uh, down a ball in their life. <laughs> Who are you working with too? You're the founder, Charlie. Congratulations on this, by the way. This is this is fantastic. Uh, your entrepreneurial uh, side came through too. Uh, who who are you working with? Uh, any any coaches that you work with in the past? On staff or like other like other teams? Uh, in, in any regard, on staff or yeah. that? Yeah. Well, our, our we have we have staff of six. Um, we you no know, we we've got like two or three. We don't have any coaches that I worked with in college NFL. We've got high school coaches that mm -hmm. work with me. Now we'll we'll outsource some of the play stuff to come in but to be perfectly honest i've drawn a lot of the things that are in first down playbook um it's not like i might draw something on uh, the wing t never coached it down a wing t in my life but i know people to go to to study and then i'll draw the plays just because i want the quality to be what it is as right. far as who's using this um we have one nfl staff uh defensive staff that uses us and that's really it now our right. our price point you know, we charge seven hundred dollars for the year for our, you know, our whole deal. If okay. we charged, if we charge seventy thousand, we'd probably get an NFL team to use it. <laughs> That's funny. But, right. um, yeah. but we charge the same thing if you're coaching uh, the Buffalo Bills as, as we do the Orchard Park, you know, Orioles. So uh, yeah. our volume, our, our numbers, you know, we've grown fifty to a hundred percent each year is our growth rate right now. Fantastic. Once again, you know, we we deal in volume, not necessarily trying to sell um you know andy reed something well if if uh if my boys successfully uh get me to coach their team next year you will have a definite customer uh, in me <laughs> i've avoided coaching them uh you know they're twins the same age same team and i just i don't know i i just i, I don't want to coach my own sons i i feel like i'll be probably too hard on them uh so I, i've avoided that but after watching the uh, coaching performance this year uh i was on the <laughs> sidelines struggling every day I, it was tough it, i'm sorry see i got all fired up it was it was a tough we had a lot of talent and uh, god we, we we just got out coached every game uh before we let you go here charlie we do something called the two minute warning where we ask you 10 rapid fire questions that are just kind of fun and off the wall so that people just get a little look at your personality before we go. So Don, go ahead. All right, Charlie, where's uh, your most interesting place to watch a Bills game or any NFL game or college game? Right here at the lake with the TV right above me. That nice. works. Uh, three people, dead or alive, you'd want to have dinner with? Abraham Lincoln, Albert Einstein, Vince Lombardi. Mm, all right. Um, you're entering an arena, you're a big deal, dry ice. What is your entrance song? <laughs> oh. I didn't tell you about this on the text message. <laughs> I was holding back on this. I, I, I don't, I don't know titles of songs very well. Uh, Underdog or something like that. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Uh, what's the best concert you've ever been to? Hmm. James Taylor. Nice. Uh, thinking back to your Buffalo days, do you recall your favorite Buffalo restaurant and uh, a dish that you got there? If you ever had time to eat out. <laughs> Yeah. Um, gosh, downtown. Uh, the, the the wings place. Uh, Anchor, 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 Anchor Bar. Bar. Yeah, good call. What was your favorite cartoon growing up? Man, cartoon growing up. That's hard. Um, probably like um, – Charlie Brown, did they have him? He's such a – I love this because Charlie is yeah. such a football coach. Like, yeah. I've always explained yeah. to people, like, he just – it's just football. Like, it's football yeah. all the time. You yeah. don't think about anything else. When you're in that – when you're in the NFL, when you're in that lifestyle, there's there's nothing else. Like, you're yeah. – you're, 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 football's you're, you're, your life. You're yep. looking at a very simple, very simple person here. <laughs> oh, it's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's good insight, though. And Charlie Brown's a solid answer. Um, this is not a hot take, but uh, what is the most annoying fan base uh, in the NFL? I have family members. Most of my family members are Dallas Cowboy fans. Oh. <laughs> Enough okay. said. Enough said. <laughs> what was your favorite road city uh, in the NFL as a coach? Once again, that's based on who had the best hotels mm -hmm. um, because you never did anything but the hotel. I would say probably Tennessee. I mean, I, for whatever reason, I always like. I always liked. I was a Southern guy, and you coached up north, every, and I always really liked it when I got to go to like Carolina or Tennessee. Cool. All right. Uh, can you drive a stick shift? Absolutely. 
I pretty much knew the answer All right, to that. Last yeah. one here. We'll uh we'll give you, can you sing us five seconds of the Appalachian State fight song? No. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'm gonna throw one more on there. What are your top three uh uh favorite all time sports movies that maybe you got to watch in a hotel on the road sometime? All right. Um I like the uh Brian Song. Oh. I like Denzel Washington's movie. What was it called? Uh, Remember the, the Titans. Titans. Outstanding. Yeah. And uh, I like The Natural. Very good. That was filmed in Buffalo. Did you know that? I did not. Really? The I Natural? Yes, yes, it was. Yep, at Old War yeah. Memorial Stadium. The, the first home of the Bills. Yep. Uh, that old stadium they used for uh, filming The Natural 40 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I ran through the wall. Was that, that was at that stadium? Yep, it was at that so, yeah. Old War and Memorial the Stadium. exploding. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So you learned something today too, Charlie. <laughs> we uh, we really appreciate your time. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. I, yeah, I think we learned a lot. Really enjoy it. It's been great. Yeah. I know our listeners are going to really enjoy uh, the red meat that you brought, uh, you know, all the football and and uh, great to reconnect with you, Charlie. Thank you very much. Thank you, and I'll, I'll say this on the way out. I mean, when you when you leave a place, sometimes you leave and you don't think much about it, or you know, other than cheering for people, when I cheer for Nate and I cheer for Alex, you know, and guys like that, um, I cheer for Buffalo just because of the fan base and how passionate they were when I was up there. And uh, yeah, I saw a couple at a marina two weeks ago, uh, older couple, and they were the, the dude was dressed in bills. It was July, <laughs> he was dressed in bills from head to toe, and I was like, Go bills! So oh, there you, there go. you go. Well, that's your, I, that's your for you. That's funny, and and I think a lot of people after watching this, you'll you'll have some new fans here as well, no doubt. So thank you, Charlie. Take Thanks, care. Yes, you'll have a good day. Take care. I appreciate it.